So continuing with the next set of Selenium Web Driver commands, we'll be looking at some more commands before we jump into uh, the locators, right? So these nine commands, we'll be looking at what are their um, functionalities, how can we use them, right? And we'll see some real examples of, of all these commands. So let's jump into our project. So this is the same project which we created in our last session. And if you're wondering where are the commands which we wrote, so I put it under a text file for reference, right? So all the commands and their usage is present here. So let's get started. We'll see all the commands one by one. So I'm going to show you these send keys and clear command together, right? So for, for this uh, video, we'll be using this sign up page because it has got a lot more controls than the, than the login page, right? So we can use those methods here. So I'm already going to that sign up page. Um, now, let me find some element and I'll be using it to enter some text using the send keys method, right? So I'll be using an ID and I'll be using this field first name, right? So don't worry uh, if you are not understanding how I'm using the by.id. Uh, I'll be talking more about the locators and uh, how you can identify your web elements using those locators, right? In the next sessions. So let's first use send keys. Now send keys, it accepts character sequences. So that means you can either enter a string or you can also enter some um, of your keyboard actions, right? So first we'll see by entering a string, um, it should enter it into the text box, right? So let's give it some string. So this is our send keys method, uh, which is entering a QA script text into this uh, text box, which we are identifying using the ID as first name, right? So let's quickly execute this. Okay, so it it is typing all these characters one by one. So that is the meaning of character sequences, right? Even if you are entering a full string, it is not directly entering it. It is entering one by one character. Okay, so now let me show you what are the other functionalities of the send keys. So, As I was saying, we can enter some keyboard keystrokes from a keyboard, right? So once you enter keys dot, right? So you can use any of the keystrokes which are present in your keyboard, like delete, control, command, cancel, arrow up. So it's pretty useful. I'll be using backspace so that uh, it deletes one character from the, from the text, right? Okay, so it deleted the last character uh, performing a backspace from the keyboard. So it's a keyboard action which is performed. So it's pretty useful to use the send keys for any um, performing any keyboard actions on your um, on your web page, right? Now, now we'll see the clear command, right? So what does it do? So clear command, it clears the text from the text box fields, right? So it's pretty useful when you are entering some text. Before entering some text, you can actually perform this command and clear out 
uh, any text which is performed uh, from previous automation executions, right? So anything may be left over on the text box you want to remove and then enter the new text. So let's quickly check this out. So that's how you can use the clear method and send keys method together in your scripts. Okay, so it performed all the operations together, if you noticed. So that's the uh, functionality of send keys and clear. Now, sorry, so let's look at the click command, right? And then we'll see all these three commands. So let's quickly see click. And for that, we are going to use some other field or element. Uh, we'll be using this uh, gender uh, radio button, right? We'll be clicking on this first option, which is for male, right? So as you have guessed already, so click command is used to perform a click operation on any web element, especially on buttons, links, uh, check boxes, radio buttons, right? So let's use by.id and we'll use gender dot click. So let me quickly verify if it is the same ID which I'm using. Yeah, um, it is. Okay, so let's quickly go and execute this. So it is going to click on that radio button and select select it for us, right? Okay, so it selected that gender button. So that's the functionality of click. Now we will check out all these three methods is displayed, is enabled and is selected, right? on the radio button. So you can use it for any web element, but uh, we'll be using this for all the three examples. So we'll first check whether it is selected. Then we will check whether it is displayed and then we will check whether it is enabled, right? And it read all these three methods, they return a Boolean value. So we'll store it somewhere. So like check one, then check two, and check three. So I want to print all these values for reference, right? So explaining about these methods, so selected is generally used in um, radio buttons and check boxes and also in select drop down list so it uh, tells you whether an element is selected or not right a particular value a particular element is already selected or it is not selected then is displayed is uh, name suggests so it tells us whether the element is displayed on the page or not right and then is enabled it tells us whether the element is enabled on the page or not. So sometimes what happens, uh, even though elements are displayed on the page, they are not enabled, they are disabled sometimes, right? So we'll print it out, all these three values for our reference. So check one. Similarly, I'll print the next ones, right? Two and three. Okay, so let's try this out now. Okay, so 
it has performed all the operations it must have got all the values so we'll check right so here are the three boolean values all are true because it is already selected it is already displayed and it is also enabled right so all the three values are true so coming to uh, the next three methods which is get text get chases value and get attribute so we are going to see these right and we'll be using a different element this time so we'll be taking up this next button right so we'll be checking uh, those methods in on this button right so let's quickly do that um so let's first do text value so we want to get the text using get text method so i'll just quickly use the identifier so by dot x part and or i can use button and then i can use at type equals to submit right okay so and we have to use get text right so it, it will return the text value of that particular element so as the name suggests it's pretty simple now i want to also get some css value right so what should i get uh, maybe the font size of this particular element right so CSS stands for cascading style sheets, right? And it contains all the CSS properties. So when you type get CSS value and you give some uh, some property, it will return you that value for that, right? So it could be font size, uh, font color, color or background color. So all types of different style sheets which are used for a particular element and how it is displayed on the page, right? On the HTML page. So this is what it is. And then I want to get some attribute using the get attribute method, right? So what do we want to get? Class value. So we can use the same element. And here I am going to give class, right? So it will return me the value of the class for this particular element. So difference between get text and get attribute is using get attribute, you can find the value of any property, right? Uh, but in get text, you can only get the value of text value of that particular element, right? So let's quickly pin these three now. So these are text value, font size, and class value okay so let's quickly execute these commands and verify them Okay, so we got the values. Uh, let me just expand this. So these are first three Boolean values. And then you can see it is the text value. We're using get text. This is the 14 pixel, which is the font size of the button. And this is the class value of that button, right? So this is the complete class for that button. So these are the three values which we got using these three methods. So that's all for this part of the commands uh, section, right? I wanted to show you some basic commands. Uh, 
so that you get an idea of how you can use these commands in Selenium. Now, uh, moving on, we'll be looking at some of the locators, how you can use those locators uh, and at, at different situations, right? What are different kinds of locators? We'll see one by one, and then uh, we'll move on to uh, more, more methods which are available uh, in the Selenium web driver or commands, right? Uh, 